Hi guys, it's Sarah from But Nerds and Fangirls, and today I'm personally excited because I have my top 25 books of 2018. Now, honestly, I only read 25 books of 2018, and boy, was this a hard list to get together. I can't tell you the amount of hours I spent thinking, oh, well, this book was better than this book, this book had a better plot than this book, this book had better characters than it. this book. It should be first. And when it came down to my final three, this was literally the hardest final three, even my hardest final five that I ever had to pick. Because while I've read so many good books this year, and I mean, like, really good books, it was a good reading year for me. I've also read a couple of bad ones and kind of amp ones. Ones I think the lowest rating I have here is a two out of five stars. I don't have the heart to ever give a book a one out of five stars. Stars because I'm a fan fiction writer, so I know how hard it is to craft a story from your own head and try to make things your own and make it relevant and other stuff. So I feel like it's because of that that I can never really give someone a one out of five stars. The book has to be like really bad for me to like actually hate it so much. So much. I think I could think of like two books off the top of my head that I really hate. Hate and they're it's a ve they're very unpopular opinions. On the books that I hate, like, I hate The Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor, even though I'm reading her current one, and it's actually a lot better for me. I don't know why I hate that series so much. Maybe I should go back and read the book, because I feel like I hate read through that one, and that is why I hate it so much to this day. And then another book that I just, like, absolutely hate until this day is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass, even though I love her. A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Not really A Court of Thorns and Roses, that one's okay. I, I like A Court of Mist and Fury a lot. It's like one of my favorite books. But those are the only two two books that I hate, which is kind of weird to me because I like their other books. It's just these ones, I guess I just hate the main protagonist in them so much that I'm just like, yeah, no. You know, also, quick mentions to two stories that I want to shout out to in this video because I did not get them done in 2018, but I did read them in 2018. Tina, that makes sense? Actually, I just finished the audiobook for this next one just today, so it's going to be in my 2019 video, sadly. And that's You by Carolyn Kepnes. I was trying... The reason why you was not on this list is because I just finished it this morning. I was trying to read the book, listen to the audiobook while watching the series on Netflix. On Netflix. And uh, these two are really great. I'm glad I have them both for my uh, 2019 list. list. I finished the series last night and I finished the book this morning, and I think I actually prefer the book over the TV show, but I do like some things about the TV show rather than the book. I'll be making a video comparing and contrasting. It will be my book to TV show series that I think is actually a very good series on my channel. Channel, I know there's a lot more views on my book to TV show adaptations, adaptations and I appreciate that. The other book I want to shout out to you because it is taking me forever and a fucking day to read this book. This book, it's been two years. It's gonna get done this year. I really hope that that's it by Stephen King. I am currently on page 530 of this massive book. Book, like this book is, let me see, I think it was a thousand and ninety pages. Not even that. This book is 1,157 pages long. So that's just the, actually, that's just the acknowledgments. 
This book is actually 1,153 pages long. And to say that I'm on page 530 is an accomplishment to me, myself. I know a lot of people would just go, oh, that's not really an accomplishment. I could read a thousand page books in, like, a week or a day or whatever. But I find it very accomplishing. That's, like, a length of a full book right there. So I'm gonna throw out this into an honorable mention mention because I did spend forever and a day trying to get through this massive book. But uh, onward with the list. So coming in at number 25 is kind of like another honorable mention. mention, but I didn't really find it as much of a book as a novella, and that's the Vampire Kami 10th Anniversary Edition. It breaks my heart to have to put Vampire Academy anywhere on the bottom of the list. But since I've already read Vampire Academy, and I only read this one for the short stories, which were okay, but they didn't stick with me a lot, I had to put this on number 25, because I feel like it would just be dishonorable to put this above any other book that I actually read with fresh eyes this year, and yeah number 25. So coming in at number 24 is the book that I gave 2 out of 5 stars, and that's Baby Teeth by Soji St Stage. I'm sorry if I'm butchering any author's name in here. I really don't mean it. Mean to, but this book, it was just... I didn't really like the writing. I didn't like the mother in this story. I didn't like... The daughter in this story, they were two really unreliable narrators, and I could deal with unreliable narrators for the most part, but these two were just awful, and I hated their mother-daughter relationship with each other, which was supposed to be the point of the book. But, but at the... But, but on the other hand, like, no one is to blame for anything in this book. Like, if the mother does something bad, it's always the daughter's fault. If the daughter does something bad, it's always the mother's fault. No one has any self-blame in this book. It's always someone else's fault. And I hate people who think it's always someone else's fault and can't admit to their mistakes. That and the dad was extremely gullible in this book and would praise the little girl so much. Much like, what do you mean? My little girl would never act that way. That way towards anyone. Anyone who says different is wrong. And yeah, I really could stand the dad in this one. So I gave this book a 2 out of 5 stars. And yeah. So the next couple of books were 3 out of 5 stars. They were okay to me, but they didn't really make me feel anything on the inside. They were just like speed reads and I was done with them. Um, but coming in at number 23 is Too Late by Colleen Hoover. This is closer to the bottom of the list because I really wrestled with giving it either a 2 out of 5 stars or a 3 out of 5 stars. Stars. I didn't really like a lot of people in this book. I felt bad for Sloane and her situation situation. I hated Asa with a burning passion. He's actually on my worst love interest in 2018 list. list. I'll link that down below if you're interested in seeing it. But probably one of the worst love interests. I didn't really like Carter also. He was like a decent love interest, but there's nothing really that special about him also. Also, and this just reminds me of a love triangle that shouldn't be a love triangle, and there was, like, so many things about the ending that I hated, and the reason why this is so low on my top list list is because of the ending. If the ending had not been there, it would have been, like, a 3 out of 5, possibly a 5, 4 out of 5 for me. For me, I would have been at least a solid 3 out of 5 for me, and... It wasn't because of those multiple epilogues. Epilogues. And there is just a scene in those epilogues that is just so disgusting to read. 
read that I literally, like, if this book had been a physical book, I would have thrown it against the wall. I'm not throwing my iPhone against the wall. iPhones are not cheap, but it was just like, oh my god, like, there was so much unnecessary shit in this epilogue that didn't need to be there, and you could have just, like, easily kept, like, the final epilogue, and it would have been okay. Okay, or you just should have ended the book and not had an epilogue. It's just, like, this book shouldn't. Those epilogues shouldn't exist anywhere in this book, and they do, and yeah. So coming in at number 22 is Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. I know there is a lot of people who love this book, but I don't like the main character in this book, nor do I like her love interest in this book. Either one of them, actually. I didn't really feel myself relating to this book. I didn't really like the bipolar representation in this book, also. Also, this Stories is man to me, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of shit for not liking it, but it's just my personal opinion. If you like the book, good for you. If you think it has good bipolar representation, good for you. I also didn't like the bisexual representation in this book also as well. As well, and yeah, it's just, I don't think there is a lot of books by sexual representation that are actually done really well. Well, so if you got a recommendation for me that with bisexual main characters that is done like 100% truthfully g great, just comment down below and let me know because I would love to read a book with a bisexual main protagonist that actually doesn't, isn't like a huge fucking cheater. <laughs> So coming in at number 21 is Suicide Note from Beautiful Girls by, oh, I didn't even put who this was by on this one. Uh, I'm going to grab my Goodreads and pop it up because it's in the books that I read. Category, uh, when did I read this book? But that was by, uh, Lynn Warrington, I think her name is. Her name is, this book was just weird. It wasn't bad, it wasn't good, it was just there. It was really weird. It went in a direction I didn't really like it to. To, it made me frustrated. I didn't really like June's obsession with finding Dahlia. Dahlia, like, I get it, but Dahlia... Dolly, Dolia, Dolia, Dolia didn't really uh, seem like such a great friend to me to begin with, so I didn't really like a lot of characters in this book. We're seeing a theme here, but I thought it was just okay. It wasn't great. It wasn't mind-bogglingly bad blowingly bad. It was just there. And it was an interesting read, but not enough to actually make me want to continue with the series if there was a continuation. So, there's that. So, coming in at number 20 is Warcross by Marie Lu. I didn't like Warcross because I felt like it was just boring. For something that had a lot of love for it, and everyone was giving it 5 out of 5 stars. I just expected a lot more from Warcross than there was. There was. I didn't get the love for this book, book and that's okay, because it's not for me to get. I personally don't like this book very much. much. I found it very bland and boring. I can't even remember, uh the main character's name. I think her name's Nika. Correct me if I'm wrong down below in the comments. Comments, but I didn't really like her. I didn't really like the whole, uh, I'm not like other girls trope for Aniko whenever I know, like, a ton of girls just like her. Like her, like, I hate that trope altogether. I'm not like other girls. I guarantee you there are a few girls just like you, trust me. Um, but, yeah, I didn't really like that. And I hated how boring it was and how it focused more on the romance than the Warcross game itself. 
itself, and I didn't really like the antagonist in this one either. Either. I didn't like the twist with this book. It was just... Uh, not so great. Okay, um, coming in at number 19 is People Kill People by Ellen Hopkins. I have a rant review about this one, so I'll just link that down below, and... You guys could go watch that if you want to know my personal thoughts about why I didn't like People Kill People by Ellen Hawkins. Hawkins, so we're moving on from that. Coming in at number 18 is The You I've Never Known by Ellen Hawkins. It was not a great year for my reading for Ellen Hawkins. Like, if people know me, Ellen Hawkins is one of my favorite authors ever, and I feel like her stories have gone really downhill as the years have passed. As fast as they're pr still pretty solid books, but, like, unfortunately, like, everyone's favorite offers, there are just some stories that aren't as great as their other ones. And this one fails for me on a lot of levels. Levels, I will say I do kind of like the bisexual representation in this book. Also, I believe the Ariel is bisexual. She might be a lesbian. I'm not 100% sure on that one. It was never really um, explained a lot, and that's okay. Not everyone needs to have their sexuality explained in books. But, yeah, I, I liked her girlfriend in this one. I liked Maya. I think her name was Maya. I liked those two in the book, and that's why it's, like, so much far up on the list than her other book. But it was okay. It was just okay, and I didn't... I hate it. Like, the one thing I hated about this book was that their main plot point, the thing that would have made this book, like, a higher rating, was ruined in the synopsis, and that is on the publisher that is not on Ellen Hawkins. By any means, but do not ruin the twist in a synopsis. It's just not cool. Cool, I hated that, and that's what really got my, me down on this book, was that I went in knowing the twist, and I didn't like that. Like, that was so easy to get the connection between the two girls, too. And it was just predictable, and I didn't like it. Uh, number 17 is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. Another thing that was so hyped up that I just didn't really care for. I like the main character, Nova. I like Adrian, also. Also, I'm very intrigued to read Arch Enemies. I have it, like, over there on my sofa, and I'll try to read it. Read it, but I think the second book will be a lot better in the first one, for my mind, because I wasn't going to continue the series, and then I read that ending, and I was just all like, okay, I have to. So coming in at number 16 is Milk and Honey by Rupi Carr. Carr, this is, like, I love Rupi Carr and her poetry, but this collection I couldn't personally relate to, so that's why it was on this part of it. This list, nothing too bad. There were a few good poems. I just couldn't relate. And that's happened sometimes. Uh, number 15 is Last to Let Go by Amber Smith. Smith, I like the storyline and the plot in this one. I can't remember why I don't particularly like this book. I just thought of it as okay. I liked her relationship in this book. I like that it is a girl-on-girl -girl relationship also. Because I don't really read a lot of relationships that are girl and girl. I watch a lot of TV series that have girl on girl representation and, like, lesbian representation, bisexual, pansexual representation. I like representation of the LGBT community in books and movies and TV shows. And this one, I like how it wasn't made to be, like, such a big deal. It was just there. There, and they were just so cute, and that's why this one is so high up. But moving on to number 14 is Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I love the Illuminae series, and this book just didn't really do it for me. I didn't really like Han- And that's because of Hannah as a main character. I didn't really like Hannah as a main character. I think I've stated 
this before. I found her very whiny and annoying. And, but I do like her counterpart in this. His name is escaping me a lot, but it was, it was a okay book. It was a solid book. So coming in number 13 is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, I know what people are going to say. Oh my god, why isn't Harry Potter at the top of the list? Well, Harry Potter is just okay with me, especially the first three books. I feel like as I read Harry Potter more, it's going to get better and better. I'm going to be audiobooking Goblet of Fire soon, and I can't wait to start that. But Prisoner of Azkaban was just okay for me. Me, I feel like I can't really, I don't really like Harry as a child. I feel like I'll like him better as an, when he progresses into adulthood or at least 16 or 17. But I don't really like child Harry at this point. But that's just on me. Um, number 12 is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maliscalco. And this book I thoroughly enjoyed. I love the relationship between Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell. Like, I love their relationship so much. I'm so scared of reading Escaping from Houdini because I've heard things go south for their relationship in there, and I really don't want that. I'm like, I think I'm like 37% through, um, like, a, it's not... Hunting Prince Dracula, there we go. I'm like 50% through that one. Not 50, 37% through that one. And it's better, and I love their banter, and I just love them. They're just so precious, and I don't want them to break up or anything. This one wasn't a bad book by any means. I thought it could have been better. Better, but it was okay. So coming in at number 11 is Simon vs. the Homo Sabians Agenda by Becky Albertelli. And this was only 11 because I don't really like Simon as a main character. Character. I didn't really like how reluctant Blue was either. Either. Even though I do kind of adore Simon and Blue's relationship, this book is not without its faults. As well, I especially hate how people forgive Martin so easily after everything he's done, and it's just, oh my god, it was just, mm. oh no, I like this book, but it was just okay. Okay, so coming in at number 10 is Girl in Pieces by Catherine Melska, Catherine Glasgow, I think her name is. This, these are like my four out of five star books also. Uh, Girl in Pieces, I really liked it. I really liked the representation for the m mental illness that was a part of this book. I don't want to spoil this book, this book, but uh, this girl is actually in, I want to say therapy or a group home. I don't know what they're called. They're called at the beginning of the book because she is also, she self-harms herself. Herself, and I think the self-harm representation was done very well in this book. In this book, I especially like the author's note at the ending of this book. This book, I also like the representation of an emotionally abusive relationship in this book. This book, this book does have, like, physically a abusive relationship details to it also, but I love how it's more on the emotionally abusive side because I don't read a lot of books that have emotionally abusive relationships in them, in them or none that are like thoroughly pointed out in this book. So I like how that's done. I like how the representation is done for this book. Look, so it's on my top ten. So coming in at number nine is Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I thought this was a pretty good conclusion to the trilogy. It's not my favorite by any means. Means I can't even remember like the final two the characters' name. I know one is Katie's cousin. Cousin and she was a nurse, and then the other one is in like God, I can't even remember their organization. Like, I read this book a couple months back. 
back. And I think this is why it's number nine on this list, because I forgot most of what happens, except the ending to this book. But it's still a pretty good book for the time I remember it. So coming in at number eight. It is actually A Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake. I actually read through this book as well as, I don't know why I didn't show people kill people when I had it. Had it with me. But this book was so heartbreaking. Breaking. I love the relationship in this book. All three si sides of this relationship. Chip, because I think there is also a bisexual representation in here. In here, even though she leans more towards women. And that is perfectly fine. But I love the representation in here. I love how this story wasn't all centered in the romance. It was centered around the situation that was happening. And friendship through difficult times. And I just, like, really recommend this book because it was pretty awesome. It didn't make my, like, top, top list of 2018, but it was still a good read. Read. I also like the family representation in this one, because how do you move on as a family when something like this, this haunts you? And I like how it just wasn't all okay in the end. In the end, I don't feel like that's a huge spoiler by this point, but I like how realistic this book is when it comes to the situation. And yeah, I would suggest you check it out. The next book I have at number seven is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. McGinnis. Now, the reason why this is only number um, seven was because I only really like Alex and PK's Part of the story, like, PK is one of my favorite characters. I love how she goes by PK. Like, she owns what people call her, and it's cool. Cool. I also like Alex as a person. The one person I didn't really like reading the perspective from is Justin. Like, if I just had PK and... Uh... Alex's point of view in this book, I think it would have been just fine. I think if you just removed Justin altogether, it would have been okay and cool. Cool, but this is a very neat book. Book, I really liked this book. And it's definitely on my recommended list. Like, I definitely recommend this one. So coming in at number six is, this is where it ends by Marie Knitchikamp. I am so sorry if I, which, Boss that name. This book I read uh, in January of 2018 and it is still in my mind everything that happens in it. And you've seen what it, Obsidio does. That Books don't really stay in my mind for that long because I read so many, but if I can remember a lot of parts about that book, I put it on my top list and I am not forgotten this book since I read it in January, and it's just that good. Good. I highly suggest everyone reads it. So, coming in number five is The Sun and Her Flowers by Ruby Kara. Kara, I really loved this one more than Milk and Honey. I was Snapchatting the verses that I loved in this book. This book, I felt like I could relate to a lot of the poems in this book. Like, there was, like, one section of this poetry collection that I couldn't relate to, and besides that, I could relate to a lot of other things. Things, and this is, poetry collection is just, like, one of the best I've read in a while, so it came out of my number five spot. So coming in at number four is Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Is anyone really surprised that this book is number four? I love a lot, like Ezra and Katie's relationship. I loved the sci-fi elements in this, even though I wasn't a sci-fi reader. Reader, like I'm so excited for Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff's next collect. Next story collection, I think it's Aurora Rising. 
Rising L, definitely be reading them. I highly suggest this book for anyone who's not really into sci-fi like myself. So, because as a not avid sci-fi reader, I found myself loving this book, and it's in my top five, and that's really hard to get to, in my personal opinion. But I loved Ezra and Kay's relationship. I love how they would do anything for each other, even if they're exes at this point. And in the story, I just, I loved it so much. So much, and it was just great, and Aiden is bomb, by the way. Um, so coming in at number three is Elena Vanishing by Elena and Claire B. Dunkel. This was the only biography that I read. I read this year, it's non-fiction. The events in this one really happened in real life. And this book is so heartbreaking and so beautifully well done that I had to give it a spot in my number three because I still remember this book vividly and it gave me chills and I love the representation of this book. Book, I also like how it shows her in like trying to recover from this eating disorder. I like how it shows that even whenever it looks like you're okay, you're really not okay. I just really liked this all together. There are a few heartbreaking scenes. There are a lot of trigger warnings in this also. Also, so I know this book is not for everyone. God knows I felt some unease reading it too, but it's definitely a recommended for me. So coming in at number two is The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. This book was so amazing. I related to Eden on a personal level, and I don't really usually do that in books. I don't find myself relating to the main character as much as I should. But Eden, I can personally relate to. I like how this is told through four years of her life. Of her life from when she was wearing the, the uh, initial like plot point of this book has happened to through where it ends in her senior year. year and it just follows her through high school and following her through this really awful thing that has happened to her and how it affects her personally. Personally, like, we read stories about these subjects, and I, like, this is one of the books where I found that this book has done it really well. Well, the only other representation of this book that I think is done, like, as well is Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson. And I personally, like, really love this book. This book, and I highly recommend it. Also has trigger warnings. Warnings for dark subject matter. So beware of that. This is not a happy, upbeat story. It is very depressing. Depressing, but I really love it because it's personally real for me. Uh, so coming in at number one, this just has to be said. This book series has continuously impressed me from the day I started it to now. I've been a huge fan of the series for like three to four years since the first book has come out. I can't believe that the first book I let the hype train get to me that I didn't want to read this because this has without a doubt been one of my favorite book series of all time. And the third book continued this year. I am so sad we're not getting the fourth book until 2020. I just really need to know what happens in this book. I think the fourth book is actually the last book in the series. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the final installment, and I am so scared to see what happens next. I just, like, my heart can't take it. Like, first book, okay, I could get through it. Second book, tore my heart in two, and this one just ripped it out completely. And that is A Rebirth at the Gates by Sabata here. This book was amazing in every way, shape, or form. 
form. I loved it so much. I read it on audiobook, but I got a copy of it because Barnes & Noble was having this sale on it. Selling it, and I was so happy with this one because it's also a signed edition by Zabaja here herself. Herself, and I'm so happy that I picked up this book because I really love the fact that it's signed by the author. The author. I follow Zabaja here on Instagram, and she is so hilarious and so funny, and overall, just like, she seemed like a really amazing person, too, and I love her books, and even after the series is over, is over, I will continue with her other series, because she has made it into my list of favorite authors of all time, and that's just one of her first book series, guys. Guys, but I love how this book is YA, and it doesn't like, a uh, brush over anything. It doesn't sugarcoat shit. It is what it is with this book series. Series, it's realistic and gritty and brawl, and the characters are amazing. Even whenever I hate the characters, I love them, and I want them to be safe. Safe, because all three of these characters are my precious little babies, and I love them to death. Like, putting Helene in as one of the main characters was the best decision Zabata here has ever made. Made for her book, Helene is one of my favorite female protagonists of all time. And I know a lot of people hate Helene, but I personally love her. I actually have a spoiler-filled review for this book, which is actually one of the top experiences for me of my YouTube channel because I was the very first person to get a review out for this book. This book, and it made me uh, so happy that I was one of the very first people to get it out on time, and it was just like my heart just couldn't take over this book, and I love it so much. So much that it will definitely have to be number one for decades. So there you guys have it. That was my top 25 books of 2018. 18. I'm sorry I have not done the days of fangirling in forever and a day. Day. I'll try to get back on that, but these... Like, this wasn't supposed to be day 12 of 31 of 31 days of fangirling, but it ended up being that way because I just couldn't stop not talk about my favorites. You know, it's just, it was great. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, it's been a great year for books, movies, and TV shows. You will see uh, my other top list. And I really hope you guys have an amazing I hope, amazing day, I hope you had a really great 2018, and I hope your 2019 is prosperous, because I don't know how many, uh, videos I'll be making in 2019. I have decided to take kind of a hiatus from YouTube after the days of fangirling are done to concentrate on my writing and my personal health. Health, but please know that I appreciate you guys. You guys, and I really hope you have an amazing day. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!